Hi everyone, I'm Alex. Welcome to today's craft project. Uh, we'll be doing a teacup fairy garden and this amazing, enormous teacup that I found on Etsy. I'm really excited about it. I think it should be pretty cool. Um, we'll also be doing a slightly larger fairy garden and a planter that I have. Uh, the second garden gives us just a little bit more room to play around in. And um, when we're all done, you can take a look at both, see which one you like, see which one you want to do. Um, you may notice that we're filming this indoors. Uh, and you may be asking yourself whether that's a good idea. Um, you're absolutely right. This is definitely the kind of thing that you want to do outside if you can, unless you're trying to film it. Uh, <laughs> uh, come to find out, uh, with the equipment I have, filming outdoors is just a little bit problematic. It did not work particularly well. So here we are, back in my kitchen, and uh, I suppose we'll see how things go, and, and hopefully I won't wreck things too badly, but I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. Um, for this project, you'll need things like live plants and potting soil and uh, just decorative stuff to throw into it. Like I've got some polished stones that I just sort of had forever, um, some unpolished stones that I just pulled out of the driveway. Um, also, I have a little bit of dollhouse to furniture that we're going to throw into the mix. And I think when we're all done, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, the idea behind this project is, well, well, let's face it, quarantine's rough. Um, I know that I definitely could use uh, a chance to escape a little bit, um, a chance to like use my imagination and do something that's just really frivolous, really fun, uh, and something that might add just a little bit of magic, maybe just a little bit of decorative flair. Um, but yeah, when we're all done, we'll see how it turns out. Um, and yeah, let's just hop right in. Okay, for this first project, we're going to keep things pretty simple. Um, even though this is a truly enormous teacup by teacup standards, it's still quite small for a planter. Um, ideally, I would have had a chance to grow some herbs or something fun from seed, so I'd have something really small to work with that would give me a, a little bit more room to play with this project. Unfortunately, timing just didn't work out that way. Um, at the end of the show, I'm going to show you how you can start something from seed. I've got a pretty cool little system that should work pretty well for you. Uh, but for our purposes here, I'm going to use some plants that I can be just a little bit rough with because they're frankly, just a little bit too big. Uh, for starters, I'll be using this red shamrock. I love these things. They are super hardy. They can take a fair amount of abuse. Um, so I should be able to cut this thing up into the size that I need and it should bounce right back. Um, I, they bloom all year. Uh, if you neglect it for three weeks, it will look pretty sad at the end of that. But if you water it, give it a little bit of fertilizer, it should bounce right back. I'll also be using this creeping thyme. I've never used this particular variety before. Um, I have seen creeping time in people's living rooms though, often in low light situations. Uh, they seem to thrive in that kind of environment. And I think it should let me be just a little bit rough. I'm gonna cut this thing up a little bit and hopefully these awesome little blooms will still be there when we're done. Um, I'll also be using little rocks that I pulled out of my driveway. Uh, I'm gonna use them as a path or maybe a patio. I'm not quite sure, we're gonna see how this thing goes. And uh, I also have a little bit of dollhouse furniture, furniture to throw in the mix. All right, so we have all the main working parts here. We've got the thing we're going to plant in. We've got our plants. We've got some potting soil here and the stones. Uh, there just isn't room here to show you everything right off the bat. We'll be throwing some other things into the mix as we go. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, oh gosh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to take my shamrock out of its little pot. I'm going to take a look and try to figure out where I want this thing to go. Um, this is definitely the best side of this teacup, so I want this facing out, which means that this shamrock, since it's the tallest thing, should be toward the back. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use this steak knife because I don't have any better tools um, and I'm going to cut this thing up a bit. Now it's definitely not going to like this. It may look pretty droopy toward the end. I'm just going to pull it apart. Um, with a plant like this, it grows out of these structures in the roots. Um, those little guys are super hardy. I'm going to do my best not to kill them. I'm just going 
give it a little tug, and there we go. So, as you can see, it's already starting to droop around a bit. It's clearly not happy with me, but it should be okay. Um, all right, and then it's just a matter of figuring out how this thing should look. Hmm. I don't know that this is my favorite one. And unfortunately, this is the kind of project where you really only have one shot at it, so this isn't the kind of filming magic I'd like to show you, but, well, it is what it is. Okay, so, this looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to go like that. Um, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is take this guy out. This should be a little easier to do divide since it's just purely root based. Uh, so I split it in half. Um, one half I think I'm going to pot somewhere else. And then for this half, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and split it again. No, this poor thing is definitely not going to be happy with me, but I think it should bounce back just okay. Yeah, yeah, it should bounce back just fine. I'm going to go ahead and start smushing this thing together. Okay, there we go. All right, next thing to do is to start filling in with potting soil. Move this up so you can see it a little bit better. Experimented with a couple different cameras, a couple different camera angles, and none of them are ideal. Unfortunately, this is just not a professional studio setting, so it just sort of is what it is. Hopefully, you can see okay. All right. All right, and then just a matter of filling in around the other edge. I did my best to get these plants right up to the back edge of this thing, but it didn't work perfectly. So here we go. All right, there we have it. There's still a little bit of room left at the front. where we can add some decorative objects. For round two, we have some other things we're going to throw into the mix. Got some polished stones, got these stones, got some small polished stones, and some decorative sand. Um, as you can see, Shamrock's getting a little droopy. If you end up doing something like this for yourself, uh, you might start to feel really worried for it at this point. Um, this particular kind of plant is very dramatic, but uh, you know, while it will show you when it's under stress, you, you don't have to be super worried. This little guy's gonna bounce right back. Um, I think I'm going to add a couple larger stones at this point, just to add a little bit of decorative flair. Um, Ordinarily, I would experiment a whole bunch before filming a final product like this, but the nature of this project and the expense of it means that it's kind of a one-and-done kind of deal. So bear with me while I just sort of mess with it and see what's going to work. Yeah, that should be pretty cool. Um, just a little something to add a little bit of flair. Then... Hmm. Next, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to make just a little bit of a patio space here. A place for the fairies to hang out. Great thing about these pavers is that uh, when I was picking through them, I found a whole bunch of them that have a nice flat edge to them. That'll form a bit of a patio. 
if you wanted to go online, I'm sure you could find great things that would work better. Um, but unfortunately, for this project, I just did not want to spend the money myself. So we're doing something that's a little bit more improvised. Hmm. Nope, not that one. Yeah, there we go. No, that's too flat. Actually, no, I take it back. We're already going to use this one. All right, so we have a patio. Next thing I'm going to do is take my handy library card out of my wallet. And I'm going to use it as a level surface. I'm just going to press down and try to make a nice flat surface that I can set things on. All right, cool. That should work. Uh, next step, I think I'm going to add a little bit of sand around the, the little patio just to make it look a little bit more like the real thing. This is going to be a little tricky. We'll see how it looks. I'm going to do my best to get it between the stones, but not all over everything. As you can see, I'm only partially successful. All right, I'm just gonna brush that off and into the cracks. All right, next step is just to add it around the edges of everything else, cover up that soil a bit. Probably not going to last through too many waterings, but hey, it's going to look good for a while. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I'm just going to show you a little bit of a patio for our little fairies. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some furniture, some random nature stuff if I can. Hmm. I want to save some of this for our second one, so I'm not going to put too much here. Um, but I've got, I don't know if you can see very well, these super cute little mushrooms that I super love. Very kind soul gave them to me to use for this project. And also, I have this just super adorable little cafe chair that I'm going to set over here somewhere for our fairy to sit. And yeah, since it's such a small thing, we don't want to go too crazy with it. Um, and I think we're done. Like I said, this shamrock's going to bounce back just fine. I'm going to water it in a sec and uh, the little guy should be okay. All right, one planter down, one more to go. Uh, this next one, like I said, is going to be a little bit bigger. Um, it's definitely going to give us a lot more room to play around in, and we can throw a whole lot more stuff in, um, and also do some more interesting things. So I'm just going to show you what this is. Okay, here are the majority of our supplies for step one. We have this container here. Like, as you can see, it has probably, mm, I'd say, four times the volume as, as the first fairy garden we did. Uh, we also have some corkscrew rush. These little guys are super fun. Uh, they are definitely kind of unworldly and kind of crazy. Good choice for a fairy garden. Um, I had just the best, best time buying these. Uh, went to just my local big box retailer and uh, the cashier when I was checking out. Uh, she took one look at them and she smiled at me and she said, oh, look at that. We call that crazy grass around here. And she's not wrong. This stuff is definitely super crazy. It's going to be great. Uh, we have the rest of our creeping thyme, which we'll use. I also have this rock geranium. Um, this little guy, I don't know. I'm just guessing that it's going to thrive better outdoors than it will in my house. So this planter is definitely going to have to live outside. I uh, also have the rest of my shamrocks right here, throw those into the mix. And then I have just an enormous amount of soil just because I'm unsure of what we'll need. Um, and in this kind of thing, better to have too much than too little. I can always just throw it back in the bag. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start 
by trying to give myself a rough idea of how I want this to look. May not be room for everything, but you don't know until you're already too deep into it to turn back. So we'll see what ends up in the pot. First thing I'm going to do is pull this guy out. Uh, beautiful thing about this container is that I won't have to break stuff up too much. Um, I think this one's going to live right here. And it is just the right height for this container. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a nice base layer. Pack it down a little bit. See how that looks? Oh, nope, too much. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn around so I can actually see what I'm doing. I want to put its best foot forward. So yeah, that'll go right there. All right, one down. Next, hmm, what will I do next? I think we'll do this poor shamrock. Just looking pretty unhappy with me right now, but like I said, it's going to perk back. How does that look? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, next, I'm going to use my rock geranium. So one thing I did, um, I deliberately let these things go without watering for a couple of days. This rock geranium looks pretty unhappy about it, but um, you definitely don't want to have anything. You don't want the dirt to be too water saturated, because otherwise it just wouldn't work as well when you're trying to transplant. But, but yeah, the little guy should be okay. All right, very next thing is the rest of our creeping time. So I'm going to pull out. I'm just going to see how it looks smashed up there. Hmm. This one I'm less sure of. You know what I think I'll do? I think I'm actually going to split this one again. No, it's not happy with me, but I think it'll be okay. I'm going to do my best not to disturb much of what's living above the, so the surface of the soil. And I'm going to do my best to give the roots just as clean a cut as I can. I'm not really using the best tools for this. Yeah, this poor little guy. It'll be okay though. All right, so now that we have these divided in two, I think that one will go right about there. I think that looks good. And this other one. Hmm. I think this other one's going to go in the back. There we go. Now, this is my absolute last chance to get things where I want them to be. So I'm going to take my time and make sure I'm going to do it right. I don't want to manhandle these guys too much because they really aren't happy with me right now. Um, poor thing. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to switch this around all together. This guy will go here. This poor thing will go on the other side. All right, next step is to start filling in again. And like I said, I have absolutely no idea how much soil this is going to take. The main thing is to try to not wreck my kitchen in the process. So I'm just going to go slow and careful. Please just bear with me. Now, the soil that I pulled out with the plants, the soil from those little starter pots, uh, have kept their shape. So I'm going to do my best to get soil in between the cracks, so to speak. So 
I'm gonna take a look and it's never perfect and to a certain degree when you water these things the soil will eventually move and sort of fill in but it's infinitely better to take just a little bit of time and care now and get it you know if not perfect as close to perfect as you can oh yeah definitely room on this end you want to pack down as best you can so you're giving your plants a nice stable firm footing to start growing in it'll help them from flopping over it'll keep them looking good and uh, keep them happy and healthy too So like I said, this is definitely going to be an outdoor one. Um, I did my best to, oh man, um, I did my best to find plants that could thrive in uh, all kinds of situations, high light, low light, lots of water, a little bit of water. Um, we'll see how it goes. I think with these things, the trick is to not be afraid to experiment. And who knows, maybe this will work perfectly. Maybe I'll want to do exactly the same thing next year. Or maybe I will want to switch it up. Um, only time will tell. All right. Pretty close to done here. Just gonna do my best to get these things nice and packed in. Oh. <laughs> well, this poor shamrock. Uh, we'll see how it does. I think I may have really pushed the outer limits with it though. Um, just a little bit more soil to give myself a nice even surface for the patio and the patio furniture. Looks good. All right, there we have it. Looks good to me. Once everything's said and done, you'll have a chance to like sort of proof things around a bit, make sure it looks nice, but I think this is good for now. All right, next step. Next step is all of the non-living plant decorative stuff. Um, like before, we have some different kinds of rocks, these little pavers, some polished rocks, some small polished rocks that I think we're actually going to be able to use this time. We're going to do a little bit more landscaping than we were able to before. Um, also have some Sandoff's camera that we're going to use in a sec, and then some dollhouse furniture that we're going to throw in the mix as well. Um, and I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to be fun. Uh, let's see. First thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to just start placing things in delicately. to see how this thing might end up looking. I'm so sorry, there are just so many moving parts to this and it is something that I only have one shot at, so this may not be the most compelling, <laughs> but bear with me, we're gonna get through it. Um, yeah, this is shaping up. So, fun thing with these rocks is that even if there are some gaps, it's okay because we're going to use sand to sort of fill in the spaces and it should look just fine in the end. But all the same, I'm going to do my best to get these guys to fit together as well as well as possible. While I'm doing this, I'm not entirely sure how everything's going to fit together. The cool thing with this part of it is that if you don't like it, you can totally change it. You know, you're not going to, it's not like you're stressing out the inanimate rocks like you would stress out a plant if you were, you know, pulling it back out of the soil and moving it around a bunch. Um, so this part is at least lower risk. Yeah, I think it's coming together. 
We have a nice big patio here for our fairies to, to hang out. Maybe have a little nosh. Um, hmm. So I'm almost to the edge of the plants. At this point, I'm going to stop doing that for a second. I'm just going to turn this around so I can get a good look. I want to place some larger stones just for the sake of decoration. Try to find a nice mix of things. If I had like a big old chunk of quartz, like a nice crystal or something to throw in here, I would totally do that at this point. But uh, let's try not to break the bank with this one, and that, that just happened to be a bridge too far. Um, I'd already spent my money on other things, so we'll just have to make do with what we have. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's coming together. Put a couple stones around this poor shamrock to sort of help keep it upright. Like I said, this guy will this guy will almost certainly bounce back. I was in school a long time ago, and I let uh, a shamrock like that completely die. Like it had absolutely nothing growing up from the top of the soil for I think maybe a month. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I repotted it. I took all those, those, I think the rhizomes, whatever those, those things are at the base of the roots that store nutrients and, uh, and water. Um, I, I put them in a new pot and lo and behold, a few weeks later, that thing came back from the, from the dead. It was a complete Lazarus and it ended up being just awesome. Um, so yeah, so there we go. I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fill in this patio as best I can with what I have. Now, if I wasn't filming at this point, I think I would probably go back outside and see if I could find some more stones that might be a better, better fit. But because of the nature of what we're doing here, I'm just going to make do with what I have used a lot of the good ones on that first one on that little teacup fairy garden so so it is what it is yeah, that'll work right, we're almost to the point where we can start filling in with sand oh no 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 So if you were building an actual patio, I think at this you would try to make yourself a nice, careful boundary. Um, that's just not going to be possible in this case. But you know, I'm sure fairies are picky about all kinds of things, but I don't think they're going to be picky about that. All right, getting close. Hmm. Well, you know what? I think it's good. I'm just gonna call that good. All right, I'm gonna pull out my trusty library card again. I'm gonna use it as a nice, even, flat surface. I try to get these things as level as possible, so that when I put the dollhouse furniture in, they uh, have a nice level surface to sit on. All right, looks good. Next step is use my other little toadstool cluster, which I'm just so happy with. I'm gonna put that right here. How does that look? Looks great. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in with sand. So like before, I'm going to do my best, well, say I'm going to do my best to get this between the stones, but that's clearly not working out. Luckily, we can always just sort of brush it where it needs to go. Ooh. 
All right, well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a minute to clean this up. And then we can get started on the dollhouse furniture, which I think is the absolute best part. All right, for our very last step, I have some just adorable little dollhouse furniture that I'm going to throw in here. I think this is just the absolute best part. Um, but first, I have this, uh, this little bit of stick that I found in my yard with this amazing lichen on it. I'm just so in love with this thing. I don't, I don't really have a place for it. In here, I didn't plan ahead quite right, but I love it so much. I'm just gonna throw it in there anyway. Um, I also have, I don't even know what this is, definitely grew from something and it forms this perfect little hoop. If I had some sort of little vine I could plant, I would totally do that so it would grow around it, but I don't care. I'm just gonna throw it in there because I love it. Very cool. I also have another chair. So there are fairies of somewhere to sit. And this just adorable little table I'm gonna put right there. Well, I suppose I'll have time to fuss with it later. I also have <laughs> this tiny little topiary that I'm super in love with. I'm just gonna put it in right there. A little watering can so the fairies can take care of their little garden. And also, my absolute favorite thing, uh, I found this on Etsy. Uh, come to find out, there is a wild, crazy, elaborate world of dollhouse furniture out there if you want to buy some. Uh, this is chicken salad with little eggs. Looks like a little bit of red onion, some little crackers. Um, it costs, come to find out, as much as an actual chicken salad from an actual restaurant. Um, but, you know... Our fairies are fancy folk around here in Ann Arbor, so nothing but the best for them. And also, this final little thing, this little bottle, which I know this looks like wine, but this is a library program, so obviously there's not going to be any wine involved. This is, regardless of appearances, definitely juice. Let's set that in there too. And there we have it. It's a little hard to see, but there's our awesome little fairy garden. Okay, for our very last project, I'm gonna show you how you can get some plants started from seed. Uh, like I said earlier, like if you can get the smallest plants possible for your teacup fairy gardens, that's really ideal. And the best way to do that is just do it yourself. Uh, for that, I'm gonna use some potting soil and also this egg carton. These plastic cartons work great for this kind of project and I'll show you what to do. So for this part, uh, it really could not be simpler. I'm just going to use the egg carton I showed you before, and some potting soil, and a pair of scissors. And also, I tried a bunch of different things. Uh, you could use a nail or a thumbtack or really whatever you can find that's sharp. Um, but the best tool I was able to find is this compass I just happen to have in my desk supplies. Uh, so jumping right into it, first thing I'm going to do is cut the lid away from the base of the container. So the lid is going to end up being the bottom of this little tray. It'll hold water. Um, next thing to do is just poke holes in the bottom of each little egg cup so that we have proper drainage. I tried a couple of different ways before I started filming, so I already have some holes in here, so I'm just going to jump right in and do the rest of them. You don't want massive holes, you just want enough so that water is able to drain, so that these little plants aren't just completely immersed in water and trapped, they will not like that. So this part is no-brainer. I'm just going to go ahead and as best I can, I'm going to fill all of these egg cups with soil. Try not to waste any of it. So I've gone ahead and I've filled this thing up with soil. Uh, 
at this point, you really just got to take a very close look at what the seed packet tells you to do. Uh, some seeds do better if you plant them just directly on top. You just sprinkle them on. Some seeds need to be a couple centimeters down. You just got to take a look. You got to do what the package tells you. Um, often people will tell you that a good base of, of judgment is to just use your pinky nail as a judge when you're planting these seeds and you sprinkle soil on top. But like I said, just do what the packet tells you. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is just put a layer of saran wrap on top. I would first water these. Uh, you want soil to be moist, but not completely saturated. Um, the beauty of the saran wrap is that it will trap moisture and help keep the right amount of moisture in the soil. And it will also help keep the temperature up inside this tiny little greenhouse that we're making. Um, mostly what I've seen online is that you want temperatures of about 50 to 60 degrees for your plants. I've seen where you, sh uh, I've seen instructions where you should try to keep them on top of your refrigerator if it's a little bit cold in your house. But yeah, it doesn't look like much, but that's a nice good start to your plants. Uh, I would recommend using herbs for this sort of thing. Uh, these little fairy gardens, uh, it's not ideal growing conditions for many plants, but the beauty of herbs is that they will do just fine in most conditions. Um, I think particularly for this sort of thing, if you wanted to do some sort of thyme or oregano, it should work just great for this sort of thing. It's a little late in the season, but those kinds of plants will do just fine for this. So this part is no-brainer. I'm just going to go ahead and as best I can, I'm going to fill all of these egg cups with soil. Try not to waste any of it. Some seed packets will tell you that you should sprinkle the seeds right on top. Some seeds do better if they are a couple centimeters under. You really just got to look at the instructions and do what it tells you. Um, you'll also want to be careful about how you treat these things while they're germinating. Uh, some seeds need to lay out in the sun. That's just how they grow. That's how nature intends it. Um, so that's why reading the packets are really important. If you have any questions, uh, the internet is a great resource for this sort of thing. Um, for the purposes of this, we're just going to pretend like you would just sprinkle all of these seeds on top. Um, often you'll find instructions that say you should bury something the depth of your pinky nail. That's always a good judge, but really you just got to do your research if you don't find instructions on the packet. All right, so there we go. This is sort of what it looks like. Um, if these seeds just go straight on top, you just go ahead and sprinkle them on. I've seen all sorts of different things online. Some places will tell you just put a couple seeds. Uh, the way we've done it in my family as far back as I can remember is that, you know, you go a little bit fast and loose with this part. Um, and as seeds come up, uh, you got to just let the... the first ones that pop up, let the healthiest ones that pop up stay. And then if you have other plants in there, like the, the, the little ones, you just go ahead and pluck out. That way you will have the healthiest plants going forward. And there, that's about what it would look like. Um, like I said earlier, what was the top of the egg carton will be a base to hold water. And then once the seeds are in, once you've sprinkled them on, the next thing to do would be to water them and then put a layer of saran wrap on top. This will keep nice humid conditions. Uh, it'll also keep the temperature inside this thing a little bit warmer than the ambient temperature in your house. Uh, mostly what I've seen online is that you want to have temperatures of roughly 50 to 60 degrees.
Okay, there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun doing this particular project. This is one that is just particularly close to my heart. Um, it definitely added a little bit of sparkle to my day. Hopefully it did for you too. Hopefully it gave you some ideas of what you might wanna do in your own home or on your front steps or in your garden or wherever you might have room for this sort of thing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And just so you know, we will be so happy to see you soon.